Okay, I'm going to show you how to bring it up to this level next with the feather earrings, the green blue eyes, uh, vermilion red in the hair, and some crimson in the sweater. Uh, I'm going to throw this in quickly. There it is. There's the earrings, and the eyes, and the nose and the mouth and we'll just leave the chin the way it is and we have a we sort of have a little neck looks like a, a younger version of her I'll take a little blue and put it a little bit in the background here I'm just kind of simulating what I have here I want a blue green background but it doesn't have to be like really bright green. Looking at Matisse and Mary Cassatt there, they were pretty much into bright colors. So I'm doing my color experimenting here. Let's put a little green on it now, a little more of this one. I like the uh, portrait with Matisse where he's got the green stripe right down the middle of the face. Okay, and what tone for her skin? It's all kinds of different skin tones. A light sienna. How about the hair? I'm just playing with colors. And I want you to play with some colors. Find out what you like. Oh, this lavender. This is nice. I like lavender. Lavender goes well with the pink. What color have I not used? I'm using pastel colors. I'm not using straight, dark, rich blues or reds. I'm not using black. What about the, uh, the earrings? Feather earrings could be a bright orange. Different orange. See? You know, when I paint, I like to have some big brushes and some little brushes. My squirrel hair, an Asian brush. This brush is like 30 years old. I know it's dirty, but it's only stained with paint over the years. Robert Simons brush, very inexpensive. Another Robert Simons. So pick the brushes you want, but I wouldn't use a teeny weeny brush. What you want to do is get the big stuff done first, and then you can zoom in with your number one or two brush and do some details if you want. I'm going to take a generous amount of water. Just have a little cup. Because it's pencil, it, it will sort of lift a little bit, but it's mostly HB pencil, and an HB pencil will not come off as quickly as a 2B. Now notice my squirrel hairbrush which I paid about, I think, $15 or $16. It's very soft, and it's synthetic squirrel. Now, there's my, there's my feather. You see my feather there? So this is where I might take a smaller brush. And I have my rag in my hand. Always good to have a little towel or rag, just to check and see if your brush is clean. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come under here. And that way I can come right up to that feather with the wet. Now you notice I'm not getting her wet. And I, I, you know I like this angle here. Don't be afraid if things are different. One eye's bigger, one eye smaller. Honestly, just look at a few of Picasso's pictures of his dear ones. Now I've wet my paper. And uh, it's soaking in. I can feel it soaking in. And I haven't touched down here. There's a, there's a bit of a... I think that's where I hit the eraser. This is looking good. Just tapping it in. Okay. Is the paper wet or dry here? This paper was dry. So I'm going to stay away from there. And I'm just going to put that light pink... I'm going to come right up to the edge. The uh, English people, when they started watercoloring, did a thing called lacing. And what it was is they'd leave a little white edge. 
next to everywhere they went. Hey, you know what? That's I'm leaving that like that. I like that. It could be like cashmere. It's got a nice texture. There's that little center mark. Be something on her neck. I like this. So did I really, really work hard here? No. Dry paper, left a white edge. Okay, I'm thinking I'm going to stay with the small, this smaller brush now. Because the paper's wet, uh, it'll do most of the work. Now I'm looking around on my palette. I've got this really nice blue-green. I don't know what you would call it. You can come up with names. To me, it's uh, cadmium yellow light and phthalo with uh, probably a drop of ultramarine in it. In any case, it's a great color. Now, notice that my board can be tilted. Very important with watercolors to know that water does run downhill. Now, remember, I'm wet up to here, but this paper's dry, which is what I want. I'm going for very thin bits of paint. Now there's my earring. See, and there's the face. Did I wet the face? No. So it's not bleeding into the face. And I'm doing a very controlled watercolor. I'm not going wild. I took my time on the drawing. And the only way that you can ruin a watercolor is by rubbing it to death. Let the paint spread on its own. There. And take a few layers. See, it's sitting in uh, over here. See this little section here? I love this section. I just drop a little bit in and let it do its work. Don't rush it. Take a look at your picture. Is it saying anything to you? Yes. Mine is saying, if there's a green background, I'd like a little bit of green in my eyes, please. Now, you have two ways to do this. You can take a pencil and do it, or you can just take a little bit of this green and just touch it ever so lightly in the middle of the eyes. You'd be surprised how just a touch of something. Whoa, you know what else she's saying to me? She's saying, I'd like a little bit of that red down there. Hey, you could put, see? Notice that when I touched this, it went white. Now it's going back because my brush is wet, but not soaking wet. So, but I've picked up that little drip there, see? And now I take this, which has so little paint on it, and just tap a little bit of color into the lips. Lips are really not red. They have a little bit of pink or light brown, depending on where you're from. And then I dry it off. This is basically the technique that Da Vinci used on his portraits. Subtle bits of paint. Now this is drying, so it's still wet. Now I can drop in. Drop in. See? Don't rub it in. Drop it in. Capture the line here. Maybe come a little closer here and tap, tap, tap. And feeling confident that the painting, the paint will do its job and I'm just putting the paint on. I can probably add a little more here. You know what's happening is that my paper is starting to dry. Uh, a little something for the hair. What do you think for the hair? What would you do? So, you know, this orange color, I know I know, I was a little bit uh, thinking that's pretty wild, but you know, I am, I'm going to put a light wash of vermilion, which is a great red. Here's the vermilion. Let me just move it over a little bit and you can see it. Vermilion. Vermilion actually is about the best red. Now, here's a little bold thing. Start with the, remember, this is wet. Start with putting it in a few places where the shadow would be. See? If you want to spread it so that it has a texture of hair, take a brush about the same size and tap it out.
Now, what do I do after I've done this? Well, I put one more in the middle. Remember our middle trick? I'm not going to do this. I'm going to stay away from there. Well, no, I'm going to stay away from there. I'm thinking that uh, having this red in the lips would be a good idea. And now this is the shadow area. So I put a little stroke in there and feather it up. I haven't even done the skin tone yet. There we go. Listen. See? Get some hair texture. Texture is very important in a picture. This is looking good. She's got a little bit of a fairly angular jaw here, but I'm going to leave that. No, this is wet. See my mind, oh, I gotta fix this, it's not right. But look what's, look what is right. That feather is standing out. I'm gonna do the green blue again. Gonna bring it over here and you can see it. Just a very small amount of the green blue. Hardly at all. And I'm gonna put a shadow on the top of her eyes. That's hardly even enough. Just a drop. There we are, just a drop, see that? Just a drop on the top part of the lid. Perfect, perfect. Okay, it's getting drier now. And I'm just taking the brush very gently and just trimming that little jaw a bit. Look at that. That's all it needed was just a little bit of a trim. Now I take a little more of that darker, that little bit of green. And because it's still a little damp, just drop in a couple little dark spots. That one's quite a bit damper. See, look at that. Ooh, that's good. You can't go wrong with little bits of paint. If you start putting lots of paint on, you may run into trouble. So that's my darkest area right there, see? It really does make a difference. And then I'm going to do one more dark green in the eye. And in the middle of the lips, I'm just going to touch it ever so slightly. You maybe need a little more. There, just that. Look at that. Every time you add a little bit of dark, things change. A little bit more up in, in the shadow areas. The purest colors should always be in the shadow area. When you have pure colors in an area that's being hit by the light, the light dissolves the intensity of the hue. That's just what nature does. So now you're looking for the balance from the red here to the red here to the red up here. And that's quite dark there, but you know the paper's drying. I don't want to get any red. Red will neutralize green and turn it brown, which is okay. So I want a really dry brush and I'm going to make sure this brush is dry because I don't want any water going into here, it's still a little damp. I'm just going to take the edge of that and I'm going to stipple it around the outer edge. Very gently. That little line there, I like that. I'm not sure what this is, but it, who cares? It's a good. It's in a good place. I gotta do one more thing. I gotta get the right color for the earrings. You know, I could take that orange over here, that pencil crayon, and do it. Do you think I should? That's pretty bold, Mr. Mulvey. Do you want to be bold? 
Are you a man or a mouse? Mm, sometimes a mouse. Hey, gotta remember which color was it? Was it that one? No, that's too yellow. Was it this one? Mm, no. I'm kind of thinking it was this one. Yep. So here we go. Wish me luck. I'll try a little bit first just to see. Just a little bit. Yes. See, little bit, little bit. What was my rule? Little bits. What was Da Vinci's rule? Little bits, little upon little, building. But this one's in the shade. So I'm going to add the darker orange on this side. And the reason being is it will look more in the shade there. Look at that, that's great. I like this. 